What is up, down and sideways, you beautiful individuals? We are back. It's Liga Unlock, Eric and Mark here with your beauties, and it's another becoming less and less rare LCSW in the off season, just like prior to the spring split. New commish Mark Z dropping in the primer for the summer split. Lots of changes coming ahead of summer, and again. For the most part, I think we both left seeing this video and reading all the news feeling pretty good about most of them. I think better than pretty good. Really excited is the way that I want to categorize this announcement from Mark Z for the LCS. You talked about getting some pretty good news, pretty happy with where things were progressing through the spring split. And I think this is the home run. We got a nice, you got some men on base after spring split. And this is the absolute granddaddy slam jamma, bringing them home. These are some amazing announcements and it kicks it all off with the return of best of three series to the LCS. Yeah, obviously something people have been calling for for over half a decade, basically one of the big checks, check marks how to get the LCS more competitive internationally is bringing back these best of threes. It's going to be single round robin, so you're going to have seven best of threes, which immediately, when you compare to spring, even if you're getting two O's or O2's the entire split, you're guaranteed to play as many regular season games as you did in spring, obviously with the potential to go all the way up to 21 games. And, and with their numbers, they said that they expect at the li very least, the minimum amount of more games this is most likely leading to is at least 50% more games that you're going to be able to get as an LCS fan. And the other big thing, again, is it is that single round robin. You have that one opponent you have to focus in on for that week. We get to see how these teams prepare, how they are trying to, and, you know, and how you focus and specialize against what is your individual opponent on that week. How do you deal with with an opponent that has had a whole week to focus in, to zero in on you. These type of things are all aspects that we are liking and excited to see for this best of three return in the LCS. Now, the domino effects from the best of three coming back is number one. Obviously, now every team will not be playing every day. We're also getting rid of super weeks. So no three-day stuff because... They've fleshed it out into seven weeks heading into this one. The schedule, still a little bit wonky, and Mark even talked about it. You've got a couple uh, weeks where they have to play in the LCS closet, even though he's saying it's newly designed for this, but it's still a closet. We all know it's a closet. It's still a closet. I'm willing, I'm willing to be open, at the very least, to see some improvements, to see some changes. Maybe a little bit of the feedback has gotten through about it being too much of the LCS closet. Maybe... We spruce it up just a little bit for this one. Uh, but it is one of those things that he did mention that he did talk about, you know, having to work it through. I think it is week two, and I can't remember the second week that is coming on through, that you do end up actually getting these games where we normally wouldn't because you have no super week. You're sacrificing super week to fill out the rest of these weeks all the way through this summer schedule that we've got right now. And as you also mentioned, no every team every day we are also having that schedule there's going to be one of those things where maybe you see a week saturday and a strong sunday given what teams are playing on what day type of situation one of the things to just keep in mind as you look at the viewer metrics and obviously this was a natural progression now that we're down to eight teams so you're going to have basically two less best of series a week, which is much easier for scheduling. The other big note in the schedule is this three week gap at the end of June and start of July where there will be no games, but that you can't harper on the LCS because that is where this eSports World Cup is going down, trying to avoid burnout. Obviously a lot of travel for not just LCS teams, but other teams globally that will be partaking in that. I think it's a regardless of, of the feelings about it type of thing. It's as long as you are aware of this event going on and understanding and taking those precautions to prevent burnout for not just players, for organizations that are going to be involved in this as well with other titles and esports that are as well involved within the league ego, ecosystem is going to be something I think we're looking at. I think an early precaution from the LCS to take that time and leave that space in the schedule for that. It, it, it's one of those ones where it's good to see the league be proactive about that situation uh, without having to maybe make a direct statement. Other two big LCS changes coming are number one, uh, improving the viewership 
quality and things that you can interact with this new Twitch extension where you're going to be able to see all the build paths, all the runes, all the skill order that the pro players are doing, which I think is something that's been early days implemented into the CB LOL, and they mentioned that they have helped them integrate that into the LCS. But I feel like deeper dive into the details for players, this is another thing people have been asking for ever since ProView was talked about years ago. This is huge. I don't want to go too crazy on it type of thing, but I think that it is a big deal because you talked about that experience as the viewer and all sorts of viewers. We're talking about a viewer that is deep into it playing League every single day or the viewer that doesn't play League or maybe has never even touched Summoner's Rift, but they're watching this very first match, checking it out, all these type of things. Having these little things on the broadcast in the Twitch window that you can interact with, you can get extra information from. I know when I check out a streamer and they're maybe playing a game I haven't heard of, if it has a little thing like that that gives me a little additional extra info, allows me to interact another type of way, it is that extra layer, another reason to want to stick there, to want to learn more, want to be invested as an individual. And you can do that with this uh, from the CB lull. This was a slam dunk for me. Love to see it. Great shout out to the CB lull. We love you. We bless bless you. Just Thank opening you. the door for that transition for the America's League, you know, just saying. And I was going to say, and hey, getting a little bit of relationship started, we can get this thing underway, moving towards where we do integrate, hopefully, one day the CB LOL LCS merge together type of situation. And the biggest thing with these extensions is always, it's when you want it. You're in control of when this pops up. It's not an obnoxious ad pop-up window that takes up half the screen that you have to wait 30 seconds for it to get away. If you want to know what runes the top lane rumbles roll in, you can just click on it yourself at your own leisure. Uh, it, is, it is so good. It is so good. It is so cool. I love that this is coming to League. Very much something that I know a lot of people that are, again, at that high level of playing every single day, absolutely addicted to Riot Games, they will love this because they'll see everything. They'll know all these numbers. They know what they can get from it. And especially the people that don't know, what the heck is a Nautilus? What am I looking at here? All these things, you get extra information on the side. You can catch up. Say if you're watching a broadcast with a friend, you have all these options and information at your fingertips. Yeah, let's be honest. It's an incredibly complex game, especially for people who are new to it or casual you need this extra information. Uh, the last big change to the LCS is coming with the playoff format. So now we're heading where all six teams will be in the winner's bracket with the top two getting a bye. So it looks a little bit more like uh, the LCK playoff format. But the bigger change is when you get to that loser's bracket because even the sixth seed is going to make it down to losers and then you are seeded based on how you uh, got eliminated down there and the regular season it's the return to the gauntlet format mark it's been like four years since we're talking about a gauntlet run i i think it's been longer than for the gauntlet run than it has been for the best of three type of situation is how it feels in the lcs and yes we are welcoming back the gauntlet and i love that it is coming back in that loser's bracket format one of these things that creates so much drama and continued drama in that storyline that through word where you get to have your taste you get to know okay coming up you know we see the watch the losers bracket this has been wonderful you get that losers bracket and it is that gauntlet format you know for the next that week that next two weeks you are locked in to do or die best of matches as you sling and slang along until the very end of it I can't believe we got it back, and I am so happy that it is back. And listen, the good news wasn't just about the LCS. They had the NACL segment as well, which again in spring brought some exciting changes, and they're clearly investing in the development of uh, the challenger scene in NA, and that continues here. First and foremost, two new partnerships coming in since the success of disguised's team we've been saying you got to open this up to more content creators and other people getting involved that's exactly what they're doing with these partnerships brandon sanderson dragon steel partnering with maryville university he's a big uh fantasy writer sci-fi writer wheel of time so having i mean this dude's a legit celebrity outside of the esports realm stepping into it 
got his accomplishments in the real world. Now he's stepping into our fake world to get some accomplishments <laughs> out here in esports. Like to see that he's partnering up with Maryville. And then the other one is, of course, this uh, I think uh, Cincinnati. You can look at them, and they are partnering the Cincinnati Fear up with Star Forge Systems. That is OTK Asmin Gold. And so we are bringing in disguise kind of the ultimate rivalry now. Asmin it. versus Toast. There it is. Can you picture the Asmin versus Toast disguised versus Cincinnati Fear matchup on a Saturday or Sunday? And there it is, the live stream, the co-streams going on from two of these content creators bringing in unbelievable amount more of eyes coming towards the NACL. I think that this is a wonderful move and actually a really smart move by the NACL to lay out a system that puts together an easy pathway for these content creators, for these celebrity figures, you know, NACL, and a celebrity league to bring them in on that ground floor where it's simple. You invest, you put up the cash, you're going to be put in with your name, your sponsor, all these type of things. And you get to have that. This is my team. I'm backing them type of mentality through watching them, all that type of stuff. And at the end of the day, the NACL, these developing players, they get that influx of cash and attention to the scene. Love this one. And listen, if the NACL and OTK disguise do it right, a matchup like that, the viewership could legit be rivaling the LCS itself if the content creators are, you know, really putting resources and care about it. So yeah, absolutely a step in the right direction. The other way these guys can be catching some extra money, we got money matches. Super weak in the middle of the regular season. It's going to be a random seventh game of the split. So-and-so versus so-and-so and winner going to take home just a tasty cash prize. We obviously don't know the numbers on this, but an easy way to inject some meaning into the middle of the regular season. This can get spicy. The claws can come out when the cash is on the line. And yes, money matches. The wager is in the building for the NACL. Another fantastic changeup for, for the, the development league here. And one of these ones that not only from the player perspective, and I'm talking about, okay, there's a match where you get this win, you're bringing back that resources for yourself, for the organization, all these things. But as a fan, knowing that there's that cash on the line, it creates the drama, it creates the storylines that you want to be invested in, that you want to see, and it hypes up the stakes because yes, the stakes are real. The stakes are the stakes that you can buy with the cash from a money wager like this. Love to see this change. Maybe you don't even need to win the split. Just show up for the money matches and you might have a more successful financial run than the team that even wins the entire split in the NACL. Uh, and then lastly, the big change and even alluded to in the LCS. We've talked about it a lot since the LPL came back is fearless draft. The LCS goes the best of three and Mark said, we're not going fearless yet. We want to just see how best of three does, but we are doubling down on fearless when it comes to the NACL. We're not doing the soft fearless anymore. It's one team picks a champion. That champion is banned for both teams in the series. And even in best of fives, this is going to hold true. But the special caveat that we just talked about for game fives, there will be no Bans. It's only going to be the 40 champions from the first four games will be off the table, but no bans in game fives. Well, the NACL is Ooh. cooking. Someone someone get some Tupperware over there and make sure we're saving the leftovers because holy cow, this is a meal cooked up by Riot Games. Yes, we get the full on Fearless in the uh, NACL and the way that it's going to go is you're going to have the normal fearless draft. It's all going to go through until that fourth game of a best of five series. And you get to that fourth game, you're only having the first ban phase. First three bans from both teams are going through combined with all the champions that are already banned played out from the uh, previous games in the series. Then you roll through to game five of potential. The Silver Scrapes has played. We're bee wee whoops. It's all great. And then we get to the juicy part of it all no bans in game five it is just whatever is banned out from earlier in the series no bans fresh for this game five you're just going right into it that is an exciting switch up one of the ones that we didn't really talk about when we it's, presented it's a, a couple simpler of solution than having to go blind pick or you fully reset just say no bans and much simpler 
much simpler, and it definitely leaves that level of spice. That hotness is there in the drafts, and that's exactly what you're here for with Fearless Draft. It's one of those things that you love to see, so it's great to see the NACL continue this experimentation with it. I like that we had a mention with Mark Z talking about it at the LCS level for Fearless Draft and mentioning, you know what, we don't want to go too crazy. We need to test, you know, test the tomato sauce before we're adding any little extra seasonings to make sure it needs any extra seasoning type situation here. So you want to see best of three on its own, get your data, get your information, viewer numbers, all these type of things throughout this split. And then maybe you try and test it in and all these other type of things. And I think one of the best things about that is understanding where the LCS is and where a commissioner Mark Z is in position of it and how willing they are to change and to listen to the fans is the important thing that has been not only said, but has been acted upon and seen through these type of things from them. Really think that that is a vote of confidence uh, as a fan to see these things come through after asking and begging and <laughs> pleading to be heard for so long. And, and that's the biggest shock of this and the news before is they are listening. It, it took like a decade for them to be like, oh, maybe we should listen to all these fans that are flocking away from the LCS. But yeah, I think generally positive across the board for these. And again, the mention of Fearless and the expansion of it in the NACL really, again, beats home the point to me that 2025, it's going to be in the LCS. You better be prepared for it. I think we might have one of these ones where, again, you're going to have to ride that fine line is one of the things you want to mention with uh, someone that is willing to make these type of changes like Mark Z has been at, at the forefront of the LCS. You got to be worried about possibly chasing trends. That's one of those things you don't want to be doing. You don't want to be constantly causing upheaval and change just to try and chase what is the hot, flashy thing around there. I don't think that's what it's been. I think this has very much been calculated. This has been about the feedback that has come through about these changes for the LCS and showing there is restraint that we do want to move to best of threes, but we don't want to go crazy overboard throwing in fearless in there. We want to see things in their own way shows that it is a responsible way to make these changes and to go through it. So you got to have that vote of confidence uh, as an LCS fan for what we have seen these changes, very least this year from the new leadership. On Rift competitive level disregarded, this is probably the best people have felt about the LCS and the state that the league itself is in, in many years. So big, big up to Mark Z and uh, Riot for investing in the LCS and making people feel good about it. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people as always thanks for hanging and we will catch you on that flippity flip